Hello students, today is our lecture number 50. So we have completed the half century today. Let us discuss some new topic, distribution of bending strays across the section. This is actually the diagrammatically distributed bending strays in the figure. When a beam is bending up to or about a certain imaginary center, like in the first theory, when the imaginary center is O and the radius of curvature is R, then what happens? Then you can just imagine that beam will bend like this. I can show you in the figure. Beam will bend like this. And the imaginary center is somewhere over here. Like this. Somewhere over here. And the radius of curvature is up to the center of gravity line. Means up to the neutral axis. This is the neutral axis of the bent beam. So this upper layer this upper layer or you can say layers above the neutral axis are subjected to compressive stress because they are in compression like this okay but the downward layers below the neutral axis are in tension because they are like stretched like this from the bottom straight like this from the bottom so from the bottom they are subjected to tensile stress tensile stress outwards in both the direction while the compressive stress are inward in both the direction. So neutral axis is somewhere over here. This is the rectangular section of the beam. So after neutral axis, you can see this is the projection of neutral axis. You have to draw one vertical line. Okay. And above the neutral axis, vertical line, there is a compressive stress on the right side of this vertical line, like this. Okay. So this is the compressive stress. Well, bottom of the neutral axis, below the neutral axis, there will be a tensile stress and on the left side of the vertical line, like this. So, this is the tensile stress and this is the compressive stress. This horizontal line denotes the value of compressive stress, while this horizontal line denotes the value of tensile stress. So, this is how the bending stress distribution diagram can be drawn. So, remember this diagram, we will draw this diagram in the numericals when we are uh, trying to solve the numerical of rectangular section or circular section. Let us see ahead and check some theories. You can see what is modulus of section. So our main equation is m by i is equal to sigma by y as we have derived in the previous lectures. Make subject as a bending moment m then it is equal to sigma m to i by y. So when we are talking about the maximum bending moment or the resistive moment it denotes m is equal to now sigma becomes sigma maximum, i moment of inertia is constant and y becomes y maximum. So this is the equation in which sigma max remains as it is and this term, this term i by y is known as z and z which is known as modulus of section or you can say section modulus. So z is equal to i by y where the term z is known as modulus of section or section modulus. What is the unit of section modulus? You can check. What is the section modulus? I upon Y. What is I? Moment of inertia in mm raised to 4 or meter raised to 4. What is Y? It is a distance in meter or mm. So mm raised to 4 upon mm which will give you mm cube. So this is the unit of section modulus mm cube or meter cube or centimeter cube like this. We are interested in finding two section modulus of two different cross sections. Our first cross section is rectangular cross section while our second cross section is circular section. Let us see first about the rectangular cross section what happens with the formula of section modulus. See this is the rectangular section in which we are wanted to find z is equal to i by y. Now what is i? Moment of inertia for rectangular section is bd cube by 12 as we have discussed in phase 1 also in the chapter moment of inertia. So i is equal to bd cube by 12 for the rectangular section. So replace over here in place of i bd cube by 12. And what is y? So y is equal to d by 2. Why? How the y is equal to d by 2? So you can see if this is the rectangle then here is the centroidal axis. Okay. And from the centroidal axis this is the depth d. This is the depth d of the rectangle. Now from the central axis this top distance, distance up to the top layer, this distance is denoted by y. 
and which is equal to d by 2 total depth by 2. Similarly, bottom distance is also denoted by y and it is also equal to d by 2. So, here it is moment of inertia b d cube by 12 and y equal to d by 2. So, 2 going into the numerator, so it will become 2 by d. By cutting, we will get b d square by 6. So, it is the section modulus for rectangular section. So, whenever section modulus for the rectangular section comes into the picture while solving the numericals, we will get modulus of section z equal to bd square by 6. So, remember this thing. Now, talking about the circular section, what is the moment of inertia of the circular section? It is pi by 64 d raised to 4 as we have discussed in the chapter of moment of inertia. Now, z is equal to again i by y. So, i is equal to pi by 64 d raised to 4. And what is y? So, from the center of the circular section, the top distance is equal to radius, means d by 2. So, y equal to replaced d by 2 over here, means 2 by d, 2 going into the numerator. By solving, we will get pi by 32 and d here, mark here, it is the printing mistake. It is not d square, but it is d cube actually, because here it is d raised to 4, here it is d. So, answer will be pi by 32 d cube. Okay, so section modulus for the circular section is pi by 32 d cube and section modulus for the rectangular section is bd square by 6. So you have to remember these two formulas while solving the numericals. Let us start some numericals over here. Let us check. Here it is the example number 14.10 for you and what is given to you? A rectangular beam 60 mm wide. So you can see over here this is the rectangular beam. This is the front view which shows the length and this is the cross section view means side view which shows the width. So 60 mm is the width of the rectangular beam and 150 mm dip. So this is the 150 mm dip which can be shown in the both the views. It's simply supported over a span of 6 meters. So this beam is simply supported. So this is support number 1 and this is support number 2. Span means length is 6 meter. Now the beam is subjected to central point load of 12 kN. So, you can see here it is central point load is acting 12 kN at a distance of 3 meter and 3 meter from left and right and support. Find the maximum bending stress induced in the beam section. So, what is the target? Our target is to find the maximum bending stress in this section. So, you can see here it is the bending stress distribution diagram. So, at the neutral axis bending stress is 0 you can see over here. From the upward direction, this is sigma maximum and in the same lower word, lower direction, the sigma is maximum because rectangular section is a symmetrical figure. So, uppermost bending stress and lowermost bending stress are having equal values. Let us see what happens now. You must remember that when the bending movement, when you have to remember one formula actually. When the beam is simply supported like this, when the beam is simply supported like this, Okay, when the beam is simply supported like this, you have to mug up the formula of bending moment actually. So, what is the bending moment in this case? The bending moment in this case is m is equal to wl by 4. So, m equal to wl by 4 is a fixed formula. For what? For simply supported beam subjected to central point load only. Okay, so replace the value of w over here. So, w equal to 12 into 10 raised to 3 which is the central point load acting at here. Now, what is L? L equal to 6 m to 10 raised to 3 because the span is 6 meter and converting into mm it is 6 m to 10 raised to 3 mm and divided by 4. So, by solving, we will get the answer like 18 m to 10 raised to 6 newton into mm. So, this is the bending movement which should be replaced while finding the bending stress. Let us check how the bending stress can be calculated. Let us see ahead. This is the formula for section modulus first. Now, what is the section modulus? Bd square by 6 as we have seen in the rectangular section. The derivation will give the answer z equal to Bd square by 6. Now, B equal to 60 mm. Depth is equal to 150 for the beam. 6 will remain as it is. So, 225 into 10 raised to 3 mm cube is a perfect answer for section modulus or modulus of the section. Maximum bending stress. Sigma max equal to m by z. It is our final formula as per our flexure equation. So, sigma equal to m by z, where m means bending moment we have calculated earlier 18 into 10 raised to 6. 
z is available over here 225 into 10 raised to 3 so by solving we will get the bending stress as 80 newton per mm square which means 80 mega pascal so this is the bending stress at the uppermost section as well as as the at the lowermost section also so this is the method by which we can find the maximum bending stress at any layer of the beam first of all we have to calculate bending moment it is simply supported beam then it is m equal to wl by 4 section modulus for the rectangular section and circular section as we have derived in the theory z equal to bd square by 6 so all the formula and the last formula is sigma equal to m by z this formula so you have to remember then and then you can solve the numerical very easily let us see some more example c 14.11 Rectangular beam 300 mm deep is simply supported. So same numerical 300 mm is the depth beam is simply supported again The span is 4 meter now. What is uniformly distributed load beam can carry? Okay in the previous numerical the beam is subjected to central point load But in this numerical we have to calculate new UDL which is entirely distributed on the beam if the bending stress is not to exceed 120 megapascal. So this is the reverse numerical in this numerical Bending stress is already given to use 120 mega Pascal and moment of inertia is also given. So this is Beneficial for us moment of inertia is already given 225 to 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4 So reverse thing is that we have to find the loading condition UDL So let us assume that W is equal to uniformly distributed load You can see the data and the conversions over here Moment of inertia everything is given to you First of all, it is a rectangular section. So y is equal to d by 2 again. So depth of the section is 300 given in the data. So 300 by 2 is equal to 150 m. Now what is the section modulus? So section modulus z is equal to i by y. So i is already given in the data 225 to 10 raised to 6 and y is equal to 150 which we have calculated. So 1.5 to 10 raised to 6 mm cube is the answer for section modulus or modulus of the section. But we are interested in finding the W which will be available with the help of formula of moment of resistance. Let us see ahead. You can see this is the figure. Here it is the rectangular section. Front view the length shows 4 meter 2 support reactions RA and RB. The depth of the rectangular section is 300 mm and the, here it is the neutral axis which comes over here the value becomes 0. 120 mega Pascal is the bending stress upper and bottom layer which is already given in the data and the beam is subjected to UDL on entire length W kilonewton per meter which we have to find. Now you can see moment of resistance M is equal to sigma M to Z because sigma equal to M by Z it is our main formula according to fracture equation. But in this case sigma is given to you and Z is also given to you which we have calculated earlier. So sigma is equal to 120 which is given in the data and z we have calculated 1.5 into 10 raised to 6 so answer will be 180 into 10 raised to 6 newton into mm now we are interested in finding the udl actually so you can see this is our formula in which bending moment m is equal to wl square by 8 remember when the beam is simply supported when the beam is simply supported and subjected to center point load only then moment is wl by 4 in the previous numerical but in this numerical the beam is simply supported again but it is not subjected to central point load it is now subjected to udl on entire length so formula is changing in place of wl by 4 now the formula is wl square by 8 in which w is equal to udl which we have to find and length equal to 4 meter so in place of 4 meter we have to convert it in mm so 4 into 10 raised to 3 mm whole square as it is divided by 8 as it is so answer will be 2 m to 10 raised to 6 in the terms of w now moment is already available 180 m to 10 raised to 6 as we have calculated over here so just replace the values and solve the equation you will get the w equal to 180 by 2 is equal to 90 newton per mm so if you are wanting to convert it into kilo newton in per meter then it will remain same because newton is converted into kilo newton simultaneously mm is converted into meter so it is 90 kN per meter UDL acting on this beam. So this is the reverse numerical in which moment of inertia is given to you, bending stress is given to you and we have to calculate the UDL acting on the entire beam. So these are the two numericals 
which will help you to understand the fundamentals of bending stresses. See, wait till next lecture on tomorrow. Revise the numericals, revise the lectures as per your conveniency. Now, I am finding that some students are very well behind from my syllabus. Some students are just uh, solving the simple stress and strain. Some students are solving SFD, BMD. So, my request to you is that you just be with time. So, you just be with my lecture numbers. This is the lecture number 50. So, you must study the lecture number 50 today. So, please don't rely on the past. Don't, sim don't solve the simple stress train right now. Otherwise, you will miss the current topic. And when the topic is become old, then you will not get the things clearly and you will ask for the doubts. So, it is advisable that you just be with me you just solve the same lecture on the same day. Till then, goodbye students. We will meet again in the next lecture number 51 and we will solve some more numericals.